Good morning. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. It always surprises me when I hear my voice in the microphone. It even shocked me, so I hope it woke you up and we're ready for worship this morning. It is the fifth Sunday after Epiphany, and you know, the Groundhog Day, which is also Candlemas in the church festivals, is right in between winter and spring. Uh, so it's a day that we celebrate light and uh, hope because spring isn't very far away. And I put on your covers of your bulletin our verse for this year, and I'd like you to read it with me. It's Acts 1, 8. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. What a beautiful way to open our hearts for worship. I invite you to stand. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who makes all things new, whose mercy endures forever. Trusting in God's mercy, let us confess our sin. Holy One, source of our renewal, we confess that we are wrapped up in sin and cannot free ourselves. We have not practiced your righteousness our hearts have turned away from you for the sake of the world you so love forgive us that we may be reconciled to one another for the glory of your holy name amen thus says our god the former things have come to pass and new things i now declare god's mercy makes us new we are forgiven in the name of christ our savior amen we sing, I want to walk as a child of the light.
the grace of our Lord, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. And I'm inviting you to sing this Turn Your Eyes Upon Jesus as strong as you possibly can today. It has a wonderful message, and I don't want you to miss it because you might be afraid to hit a wrong note. So if you're going to hit a wrong note, sing it loud and proud. Here we go. Let us pray to together the prayer of the day. Lord God, with endless mercy, you receive the prayers of all who call upon you. By your spirit, show us the things we ought to do and give us the grace and power to do them. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, amen. You may be seated. Our first reading from today is from Isaiah 58. <clears throat> Shout out, do not hold back. Lift up your voice like a trumpet. Announce to my people their rebellion, to the house of Jacob their sins. Yet day after day they seek me and delight to know my ways, as if they were a nation that practiced righteousness and did not forsake the ordinance of their God. They ask of me righteous judgments. They delight to draw near to God. Why do we fast? but you do not see. Why humble ourselves, but you do not notice? Look, you serve your own interest on your fast day and oppress all your workers. Look, you fast only to quarrel and to fight and to strike with a wicked fist. Such fasting as you do today will not make your voice heard on high. Is such the fast that I chose a day to humble oneself? Is it to bow down the head like a bur bulrush and to lie in sackcloth and ashes? Will you call this a fast, a day acceptable to the Lord? Is not this the fast that I chose, to lose the bonds of injustice, to undo the thongs of the yoke, to let the oppressed go free, and to break every yoke? Is it not to share your bread with the hungry and bring the homeless poor into your house? When you see the naked, to cover them, and to not hide yourself from your own kin? Then your light shall break forth like the dawn, and your healing shall spring up quickly. Your vindicators shall go before you. Sorry. The glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Then you shall call, and the Lord will answer. You shall cry for help, and he will say, Here I am. If, I, if you remove the yoke from among you, the pointing of, your, of the finger, the speaking of the evil, if you offer your food to the hungry and satisfy the needs of the afflicted, then your light shall rise in the darkness and your gloom be like the noonday. The Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your needs in parched places and make your bones strong. And you shall be watered like a garden, like a spring of water, whose waters never fail. Your ancient ruins shall be rebuilt. You shall raise up the foundations of many generations you shall be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of the streets to live in. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Now we'll read Psalm 112, and this will be read responsively. Hallelujah! Happy are they who fear the Lord and have great delight in God's commandments. Their descendants will be mighty.
Wealth and riches will be in their house, and their righteousness will last forever. Light shines in the darkness, for the upright, and the righteous are merciful and full of compassion. It is good for them to be generous in lending and to manage their affairs with injustice. For they will never be shaken, the righteous will be kept in everlasting remembrance. They will not be afraid of any evil rumors. Their heart is steadfast, trusting in the Lord. Their heart is established in the luxury until they see their desire upon their enemies. They have given freely to the poor, and their righteousness stands fast forever. They will hold up their head with honor. The second reading for today will be from 1 Corinthians chapter 2. When I came to you, brothers and sisters, I did not come proclaiming the mystery of God to you in lofty words or wisdom, for I decided to know nothing among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. And I came to you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. My speech and my proclamation were not with plausible words of wisdom, but with a demonstration of the spirit and of power so that your faith might rest not on human wisdom, but on the power of God. Yet among the mature, we do not speak wisdom. We, sorry, we do speak wisdom, though it is not a wisdom of this age or of the rulers of this age who are doomed to perish, but we speak God's wisdom, secret and hidden, which God decreed before the ages for our glory. None of the rulers of this age understood this, for if they had, they would have not crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, what no eye has seen, nor ear heard, nor the human heart conceived, what God has prepared for those who love him, these things God has revealed to us through the Spirit. For the Spirit searches everything, even the depths of God. For what human being knows what is truly human except the human spirit that is within? So also no one comprehends what is truly God's except the Spirit of God. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit that is from God, so that we may understand the gifts bestowed on us by God. And we speak of these things in words not taught by human wisdom, but taught by spirit, interpreting spiritual things to those who are spiritual. Those who are unspiritual do not receive the gifts of God's spirit, for they are foolishness, they are foolishness to them, and they are unable to understand them because they are spiritually discerned. Those who are spiritual, spiritual discern are all things, and they are themselves subject to no one's scrutiny. For who has known the mind of the Lord so as to instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. Word of God, word of life. I invite the children up for a children's sermon. Good morning, everybody. I hope you had a really good week. Last week, we were talking about blessings. Did you have any great blessings this week happen to you? Anybody? Anything wonderful happen to you that you'd like to share? I had a wonderful week because I prayed for certain things and they started to happen and it was just like, oh my goodness, I think Jesus, you heard me. Turn in towards me a little bit because I have some things to show you. You heard Doug speak and he had a lot of words this morning, didn't he? Do you remember anything that he said? Uh, <laughs> you know, sometimes I realize that's what happens on Sunday mornings. We don't remember exactly what was said and so that's why I really, really think you need to take those bulletins home and put them somewhere so you can read those verses and scriptures all week long. Maybe just pick one verse out of it and try to memorize it or say it before your, your meals, a prayer together as a family. It's important to practice being salt and light. 
Have you ever been called salt before? Anybody? <laughs> Have you ever been called light? Oh, I bet a lot of you have been called light. When you walk into the sanctuary, I call you light because you make me smile when I see you walk in. Well, okay, this is exactly what is happening to Jesus. He's telling everybody about the kingdom. Do you know anything about Jesus' kingdom? Ah, oh, yes, very good answer. It's a place where uh, Jesus is taking us forever and ever. And he's saying to all the people around him, he's telling them, it's a, a blessing you are invited to be part of. And then, have you ever sat somewhere totally unexpected and you are chosen to do something? Have you ever had that happen? Like today, Hayden, what if I said I'm choosing you to do the sermon? How would that make you feel? <laughs> you might get a little scared. Well, that's what all these disciples are sitting around listening to Jesus because Jesus looks at him and he goes, you are salt. He doesn't say you could be salt. He goes, you are salt. And then he goes, you are light. And you are a city set on a hill that everybody sees you. And then just like everybody looked around when I said he might do the sermon. That's exactly what they're saying. What are you talking about, Jesus? Salt, it does a couple of things. But I do know that salt does absolutely nothing unless I move it out of my cupboard. Right? Can you taste this salt just by looking at it? Does it preserve anything just by looking at it? It requires action. It, it requires action. I brought this solar light that I have out in my yard uh, and it's not shining because I have not exposed it to the sun long enough to make it shine. And so the message is, where does all the source power come from? Go ahead and say that same word that you said. The kingdom is where Jesus lives and it is, yeah, all authority comes from where God is. And so if we're not plugged in and letting that light come in and power us up, we really don't have what it needs. And so we get that at our baptism where the, the spirit comes to live inside of us, to stir us up to be the light around. We're going to sing a lot of songs today about light. We want to walk as a child of the light. We're going to sing this little light of mine. And then we're going to say, shine, Jesus, shine. And then I was thinking of that all week long. And guess what came to my desk? It was a request to talk about Jasmine. That's what she looks like when we give your money. That's who you are helping to have a good life. And this is her letter. And do you know what her memory verse in her letter is? Jesus said, I'm the light of the world. Is that just like God saying to all of us, we need to be light. When Jesus is telling us we need to be the light of the world. And this is her letter to you and to all of you. She says, dear sponsor friends, have a blessed day. I hope that you are in good condition, always. And if you will ask me, I'm fine by God's grace. My family are, as, are well too. For now I am in grade nine and the school year started last August. I go to school for a limited face-to-face -face class. Thanks be to God that everything is good, even the COVID-19 is, is there. I'm praying for God's help and the strength he gives me every day. Please pray for my studies and health. You know, sometimes we aren't so happy to go to school. We think, oh, we have to go to school. We have to do these things. Jasmine's so happy that she gets to do these things. Because of our offerings, we help her do that. And then she asked this, how about you? What makes you busy every day? I really missed you so much. It's been a long time I have not received a letter from you. Are you doing well? I always pray to God that you will be fine and your whole family. Till next letter, God bless you. Love, Jasmine. You know, 
light came from us and she sent it right back. You can't get rid of the light when you're sharing God's love. It just keeps shining everywhere you go. That's the message. And so this week, I encourage you to remember that you are salt. You're supposed to just take that saltiness that Jesus puts in you and stirs up in the Holy Spirit and make the world taste better by your presence. How's that? And shine wherever you go. Let us pray. Dear God, thank you for making me salt. Thank you for making me light. And thank you for being the power that stirs it up. Thank you for being the power that stirs it up. Amen. Amen. Thanks for coming up. Gospel acclamation. said you are the salt of the earth but if salt has lost its taste how can its saltiness be restored it is no longer good for anything but is thrown out and trampled underfoot you are the light of the world a city built on a hill cannot be hid no one after lighting a lamp puts it under the bushel basket but on the lampstand and it gives light to all in the house in the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have come not to abolish, but to fulfill. For truly I tell you, until heaven and earth pass away, not one letter, not one stroke of a letter will pass from the law until all is accomplished. Therefore, whoever breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same, will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does them and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, you may be seated.
Let us pray. Gracious God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable to you, Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. You may have heard about the Pygmalion effect. If you were a teacher, I'm sure that conversation came around every once in a while in those professional developments, which I know all of you were paying attention to and looking forward to. Oh, good. I know you're awake. I heard you laugh. <laughs> those professional development days are always supposed to enlighten us just a little bit, and that's exactly what the scripture does for us. You see, there was a man called Rosenthal, that was very uh, interested in this psychological phenomenon called the Pygmalion effect. He thought if teachers had these high expectations of the students, not knowing anything about them, that their results would be much better in the classroom. He also thought if teachers had very low expectations of their students, they would do poorly. It was the self-fulfilling uh, prophecy. And so there was a man in 1963 by the last name of Jacobson who said, I'm gonna give this a try in the classroom. And so they randomly picked students to be in these teachers' classrooms, but they intentionally told the teachers, you have the highest IQ students in your class and you need to feed them information, they get it quickly. And then they also told another teacher that was doing the class that these students are very low on the IQ and you're going to have to just relate to them as needed. And the self-fulfilling prophecy was exactly right. Those who thought they were teaching the very highly intelligent students scored higher, even though the students had no IQ that matched what they were said to have had. And the ones that the teacher expected lower really fulfilled that promise, prophecy too. I like this when I read this about Jesus coming and talking to his kingdom. Who is he talking to? He's not talking to the people in the community the scribes and the Pharisees, the highly educated, he's gathered on this mountaintop, giving the Sermon of the Mount to the marginalized, the people that no one expected anything out of, the ones that nobody ever thought was even valued or worthy to expect anything from them. So Jesus, who is claiming to be the king, the one who is sent, who in Matthew 4, 17 says, repent and turn toward the Lord. The kingdom of heaven is near. They're all sitting around this Messiah, not understanding why he would spend time with the lowly, marginalized people that really have no place in society, that could make any difference. Jesus knew exactly what he was doing. And that's a lesson to us. We look at other people the way our world likes us to see them. And so when we're reading the Beatitudes, it is one of the most popular 
places in the Bible, Matthew 5, 6, and 7, read it over and over, it's the blessings, we like it, and yet we don't quite understand that he's talking to us. And he's, last week, just to review a little bit, you know, the blessings, he's talking to the poor in spirit, those who mourn, those who are meek, those who hunger for thirst for righteousness, those who show mercy, those who are pure in heart, those are peacemakers. Be happy if you are persecuted in my name's sake. Be happy that people are putting you in that position. You are blessed and you are seen in the kingdom of heaven. And all this time that Jesus is saying that, he's actually describing himself. This is who I am. This is who I have come to be. And they don't quite know it yet. And then, just as Hayden's response was when I told him he was going to do the sermon, he looks at every one of you and he says, you are salt and you are light. You are the salt of the earth, and you are the light of the world, and you are a city set on a hill. No one had ever looked at them and even thought they were worth anything. Salt and light was very valuable. It's essential to life. And Jesus, with these high expectations, talking to us, you are salt. This is your purpose. And I'll give you absolutely everything you need. But I need you. I need you to internalize what I am telling you. To let me be the power of your life, the source. I will be the city on the hill for you to always guide and go back to. But I want you to be out in the world and I want you to share the love that I am giving to you, to absolutely everyone you see. And that's what that long passage of Isaiah is all about. I love Isaiah. I hope you fall in love with Isaiah. So I'm asking you to take this bulletin home and read Isaiah over and over, word by word. There's a lot, and it might take you a year to get through that. But it's just saying, just because you say you're a Christian does not make you a Christian. Just because you say you worship God does not make you worship God. You have to internalize it. Just because I have salt in my cupboard does not mean I put it in the recipe of my life. You can't hide that light under a bushel. You got to let it shine. You got to take a chance. You got to be a little risky and go out and say, I'm a child of God. I am an inheritor of this kingdom, and I am here to love you. I don't even know how I'm going to do that because I don't know you and you look a lot different than me, but I can love you because God told me I could. And when I trust and obey God, I can love you. And then the light gets a little brighter as we're out and we're sharing that. And it's not because of our words. It's because what you hear at the baptism, the verse, let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. That is such an essential purpose for us, to be light, not to go out and complain. And I have tried to do this myself. You know, it's really easy to get in those moods where nothing seems right, and you can complain just about everything. And then I decided, <sighs> I'm going to make a different approach. I'm going out and I am going to look for everything that's good. And sometimes you have to look really deep. But before you complain about being in that line, waiting for something, look around you. Who could you be a light for? Where is there something that needs intervention? Where is there something that you have the gift to make it shine like God is telling us to shine? And you can't do the Beatitudes without thinking of the fruits of the Spirit. To have love, peace, joy, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. 
That's exactly what Jesus is telling us to do. We have these opportunities around us every day. It's just called living. It doesn't have to be a plan. It doesn't have to be a project. You don't have to be on a committee. You just have to decide, I'm going to be a child of God today, and I am going to live this light. I am going to be the salt. And when someone is speaking poorly, and if someone is pursuing hate, I'm going to walk over. I may not say a word, but I'm going to stand and I'm going to shine God's love. A neighboring community of ours have, have faced some bad community press. And their library, the center of their community, posted a sign, said, this community does not tolerate a mindset that perpetuates hate. We love. I love that sign made me fall in love with that community all over because somebody had salt enough to go and say, I want to shine God's light. I don't want it to be about hate. I want them to know that God's people are here. And God told us to feed people and to clothe them and to give them drink and to welcome them and to visit the stranger, to open our homes. And anything that God asks us to do will unite us, not divide us not make us fear, not make us hate, but make us love. That's what Jesus' message is about the kingdom. Christ has given us the salt and the light of his divinity, not for ourselves, but for others to see the light shining through us in our deeds to glorify our God in heaven. Now we're going to sing this little light of mine, and then we're going to install our leaders of good hope. And I am asking you, to let these lights shine. We're going to have the holy sacrament that God gives to us. It's not something we earn or we have to understand totally. God gives us the sacraments that we might understand God loves us, forgives us, and grace is there. So when you come forward, know that you are receiving this beautiful gift of God. And he's looking at you saying, you are salt, you are light. Shine. Share the good news. Amen. <clears throat> to come forward, the congregation may be seated. The names of our leaders have been listed often in our bulletins. And I'm so happy they said yes when they were asked. And I want you to take a really good look at all of them. And I want you to have conversations with them on how Good Hope can share God's light in our community. Gary Alk, Melinda Crawl Polly, Nancy Hybe, Sharon Zahn, Joy Schiffer, and Lori Burkhart. We give thanks for your willingness to serve. In baptism, we are welcomed into the body of Christ and sent to share in the mission of God. 
We rejoice now that these sisters and brothers will lead us in our common life and our mutual mission as a congregation. A reading from 1 Corinthians. There are varieties of gifts, but the same spirit. And there are varieties of services, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the spirit for the common good. You have been elected to positions of leadership and trust in this congregation. You are to see that the words and deeds of this household of faith bear witness to God, who gathers us into one together with the whole church. You are to seek to involve all members of this congregation in worship, learning, witness, service, and support, so that the mission of Christ is carried out in this congregation, in the wider church, in this community, and in the whole world. You are to be faithful in your specific area of serving, that the spirit who empowers you may be glorified. You are to be examples of faith, active in love, fostering peace, harmony, and mutual understanding in this congregation. On behalf of your sisters and brothers in Christ, I ask you, will you accept and faithfully carry out the duties of the offices to which you have been elected? If so, say, I will, and I ask God to help me. People of God, I ask you, will you support these, your elected leaders, and will you share in the mutual ministry that Christ has given to all who are baptized? If so, answer, we will, and we ask God to help us. We will, and we ask God to help us. I now declare you installed as council members of this congregation. Almighty God bless you and direct your days and your deeds in peace that you may be faithful servants of Christ. Amen. I'd like you to turn around and I would like you to give them your support with a round of applause. You may go back to your seats and I ask you to stand for the creed. Let us confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, who was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead, and on the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Called together to follow Jesus, we pray for the church, the world, and all in need. Call your people to seek your wisdom in difficult conversations and action. Give the church everywhere courage to, re to repent for the ways we have tolerated and practiced injustice. Inspire our wonder at creation from the light of dawn to the beauty of the dark night. Sustain the unseen depths of the ocean to the plants and animals we know well. Bring healing to the lands and communities experiencing natural disasters. Instruct the powerful in your ways. Provide upright leadership in business and industry that workers are not oppressed. Throughout the world, inspire voters and raise up politicians to heed your call for nations to practice righteousness. Loosen the bonds of injustice in our midst. Grant peace to endless quarrels. Put an end to hunger and break every yoke of oppression. Shelter all who flee abuse in their homes or violence in their communities. Satisfy those afflicted in any way. We especially pray for Sean McDiffitt, Patty Garrett, Connie Smith, Marge Bodnot, Mike Colley, Heidi Walton, Ruth Lady Pollock, 
Carol May, Bob Norris, Marion Smith, Juanita Young, Keith Young, Lois Walker, Mike Schiffer, Eileen Osborne, and Diane Kerr. Shape our congregation to be the soul of the earth. Give us delight in your commandments that we are generous with those in need. Make us steadfast in our trust in you, ready with tangible mercy and compassion for our neighbors. The cross and resurrection bring redemption from sin and death. We praise you for all whose unshaken faith in Christ shines forth in their witness. Keep them in our remembrance and bring us with them into the kingdom of heaven. We bring to you our needs and hopes of God, trusting your wisdom and power revealed in Christ crucified. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Share the peace of the Lord. Pray with me. For I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you welcomed me. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. 
Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Come and taste the joy of God. Thank you. 
I invite you to stand and hold the hand of the person next to you. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. The God who faithfully brings forth justice and breaks the oppressor's rod, bless, strengthen, and uphold you today and always. Amen. I have several announcements for you today, and I do the announcements at the end of the service because I'm sending you out on a mission and to be the salt and light. We are uh, taking suborders until tomorrow, so please get those in. The born blessing bags are uh, listed on things that are needed and they are available. If you have op an opportunity to give to that, wonderful. And I ask especially uh, a blessing for the backpack ministry that goes into our community. They are asking for cans of fruit and vegetables. We are going to extend, and extend that just a little bit more. But I would like you to just to think how happy a little can of fruit and a can of vegetables might bring some substance to a family that's hungry. So please pray about that, and I invite you to uh, give to where you can and give cheerfully. Here is the blessing for the day. The God who faithfully brings forth justice and breaks the oppressor's rod, bless, strengthen, and uphold you today and always. Amen. Amen. People of good hope, we are grounded in faith, gathered in love, and sent, and sent with, with the purpose, purpose so, so that, that others, others may gain the kingdom. kingdom. Now, I'm just hitting all the ones that I'm asking you to sing strong today. We are marching in the light of God. <laughs> Go in peace, follow the way of Jesus. Thanks be to God.